Okay, this is 8F5, 8th grade functions, 5, video 1, describing functional relationships. Here are a few terms to know. I'd like you to write these down in your journal and define them, please. All right, so here we have a graph. It's got a purple um, design line, I guess you would call it, on here. And uh, we see a lot of dips and doodles and uh, no particular pattern to this. And in this standard, what we need to do is describe uh, what's happening here, uh, locate some intervals in which we have some different occurrences happening. And uh, we're going to find that here on the next page. Some of the questions they want us to answer according to the given graph. All right, we have five questions, and I'm going to just underline some of the key words that we're going to go look for in our graph. We're going to look for the intervals, right here, the intervals in which um, the graph of the line is increasing, the interval or intervals in which the function is decreasing, constant, linear, and nonlinear. So what I guess I'm going to do right now is is give a letter that will represent each of these words. And I think we're we don't have any repeat letters. So increasing, we are going to use I, decreasing D, constant C, linear L, and nonlinear will be N. So let's go back and into our uh, graph and find out all of these different um, occurrences that are happening to this purple, uh, it's not even a line, just this picture of the purple drawing. What? Okay. Looking uh, from this beginning dot, we read the purple line from left to right. Uh, a lot of times these examples are going to include increases in time, and time will go from left to right on the x-axis. So all of our relationships that we discuss, all of the intervals that we talk about, will be related <clears throat> to the x-axis values. Alright, so as we're going from left to right, I see that we have an increase from left to right. So we are starting at negative 10 on the x-axis. And we are increasing on the x-axis to this negative 5. So we have an increase. And it also appears as though we have a linear look to the line. All right, so we have increasing and linear from negative 10 to negative 5. As I go on from negative 5 to, again, remember, we're on the x-axis, so we're at negative 1, negative 2, we have this decreasing look. So we'll call this decreasing. And ask yourself, is it linear or nonlinear? Well, to me, it looks like there's a little bend or arc to this line. So we're going to call this nonlinear. So from negative 5 on the x-axis to negative 2 on the x-axis, we see a decrease, and it is nonlinear. All right, so now we have the next section. We are going from negative 2 all the way up to, on the x-axis, we're at positive 3. So from negative 2 to positive 3 on the x-axis, we have an increase. And it looks again like we have a little arc. So this is nonlinear. All right, now we're at positive 3 on the x-axis. And we are going all the way to positive 7 on the x-axis. And this looks to be constant. It doesn't change, so this is a constant rate of change and, uh, not a rate of change, a constant look to the line, and then this is also linear. And then from positive 7 down to positive 10, we have a decrease, and that one is definitely linear. 
All right, so now what we're going to do on the next page is we're going to take those ideas and, and put the numbers into the answers for us. So um, if I'm looking for the increases, I'm going to go from negative 10 to negative 5. All right, so that's one of my answers. So we increase from negative 10 on the x-axis to negative 5. And I think we had another one in there. Let's go back. Another increase was right here, and that was from negative 2 to positive 3. And I believe that is all we have in terms of the increasing. Now let's go look at the decreasing portions of this graph. All right, so we have decreasing from, we said, negative 5 all the way to negative 2. And I believe we had another one. All right, decreasing was the last one. So it was from positive 7 all the way to positive 10 on the x-axis. All right, next one we're looking for is the constant um, change, the constant. And we had one constant, and the constant went from 3 to 7. And now we are looking at linear. So we're looking to see what portions of our graph have a linear look to it. And we stated that from negative 10 to negative 5 is one of them. And we had one more. Actually, I think we had two more. Yeah, we had two more. Um, the constant line was also linear, so that was from 3 to 7. And one more. That was the last one. Okay, we went from 7 to 10. All right, last one, we are looking for nonlinear. And nonlinear were these arc looking um, parts of your line, and that was from negative 5 to negative 2. And one more. Nonlinear was from negative 2 to positive 3. Okay. Next example, it says, Taylor walks to and from school. During science, her class walks to a nearby park to collect insects. Then they return to the school for the rest of the school day. The graph shows the relationship between the time x and her distance y from home. Describe the relationship between time and distance as shown in the graph. So I am going to give you the graph of the path that Taylor took on her walk to and from school and her little adventure out to the park when she was collecting insects. So I'm going to take you through this and it says to use a description of what is happening. And I've actually already typed that out for you and I'm going to walk you through each part of this. All right, so here we have a graph of the path that Taylor took um, from 
8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. So on the bottom x-axis, I've listed all of the times for you. And if you see, we are in um, half-hour intervals or increments, starting at zero here. We go to 7.38, 8.39, 9.30, And you can uh, figure out the rest of that on the bottom there. And then on the y-axis, this is the distance that Taylor is traveling in miles. So as we go up from zero, we have a half mile, one mile, one and a half miles, and each interval appears to be uh, one tenth of a mile. All right, so if I'm following Taylor's path, I start, or Taylor started at 8 a.m., and she went straight up one and a half miles, and how long did it take Taylor to travel that one and a half miles? From 8 o'clock to 8.30, that's the next interval over. If I follow that up, I have a nice little point right here. So if I were to describe that, it says Taylor's distance from home increased from zero miles to one and a half miles from 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Okay, then what happened? We have this constant line that's going across at one and a half miles, and we have a stopping point right here, still at one and a half miles, but at a different time. And the time there is 11 a.m. So if I come over to my description, it says, her distance from home remained constant from 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. So that's this time frame right here. So basically, she is, I guess you'd say she's at school and she hasn't left school. So she has this time from, from 8.30 to 11 o'clock, just working in the classroom maybe. And then we see a little dip here. We, we go downward we see a decrease and right here it says her distance from home decreased from one and a half miles to one and two tenths miles from 11 a.m. to 11 10 a.m. Uh, so that might be that little walk uh, to the park looking for insects it remained constant for a certain amount of time and then the um, the distance, what, increased farther away from home. I'm assuming she went back to the school for the rest of the school day. And you can follow the rest of this paragraph and match it up with all of the rest of these occurrences as we moved along our graph. And finally, we ended up, what, Taylor was back at home at 3.30 p.m. So I'd like you to read through this uh, typed out paragraph that I gave for you. This is my description of the graph. And then when you get to class, you are going to be given a description, a paragraph form description, and you are going to create the graph from it um, using a coordinate plane. Uh, you're going to have to create an X and Y axis and, and uh, put in all the information necessary to solve. Okay, in your journal, I'd like you to define the given terms on page two of the flip chart. Write a few sentences on what you learned from this video. Write down any questions that you might have. If there's any confusion, I would like you to bring those to our attention in class. We can work in our groups, and uh, I'll have many more examples for us to work on. See you in class.